OK, this is a quick, hopefully a quick video for my A-level electronics students. Just going to show you how to create a new project in MP Lab X. So I'm going to click that button and I'm going to make a new standalone project. Click Next. You could, if you wanted, filter to find the PIC 16F88. You could first of all filter by family. There's, there's no point in doing that. As you know what device you're using, just type PIC 16F88. That's the quickest way to do it. Click Next. Um, always start with a simulator. Once you've got it simulated and working, then you can think about downloading it with a hardware tool. So choose Simulator. Click Next. Uh, we need to use MPASM. That's the assembler we're going to use. We're going to write in assembly. I also happen to have a C compiler installed. You, you probably don't if you're um, an unless you're using a computer at home. Click Next. Give your project a name. Make it something useful. I'm not worried but, uh, on this particular instance, but do make the project name something useful. Don't need to change anything else there. Uh, obviously, you do need to specify a project location. If you're one of my students at school, I will need to tell you exactly where because the user rights have been customized, so you can only execute files in certain locations. So anyway, I'll um, sort that out with you individually or in the lesson. So then just click Finish. And we've got a new project. By the way, I'm not using the start page or the lab, so, um, the store, so I'm going to um, close up. Um, OK, source files, that's where your assembly files should be but of course at the moment it's empty we haven't added anything so let's right click source files new and we're going to use the simple assembly template leave the name that's fine uh, if you had multiple assembly files you might consider changing them but that's fine for the moment finish and that's our very simple assembly program you could actually build it which is to assemble it to uh, just to check that there are no error messages yet yeah, build successful I wouldn't expect anything else by this point so now we need to add some configuration bits because ultimately when we get this downloaded to the microcontroller you need the configuration bits to configure the microcontroller to do what you want to do so let's just delete that comment there window Target memory views, configuration bits. This is a wizard that's going to help us develop those um, configuration bits. And uh, you only really need to change, definitely need to change a couple of these. Um, there are other ones which may you may need to change, but I want to enable the internal oscillator. So it's one of these two options. If you choose this option, then you can get the clock frequency out. Uh, if you choose this option, then the pins which are normally used by external clocks can be used for I.O. So that's what I'm going to use, the internal oscillator with I.O. functions on those pins. Watchdog timer definitely needs to go off. That's an absolute. Um, others, I either am not bothered about them or in a couple of cases don't know what they do. Low voltage programming. We're not going to use, I'm just going to turn that off. Whether that actually makes a difference to us, I'm not sure. I haven't tested it, but as we're not using it, I'm just turning that off. At the moment, these configuration bits, this is specifying what the wizard's going to use, but it hasn't actually included it in our source file. So I need to click generate source code. And I'm going to select all of that. I'll just press Control A, Control C to copy. I'm going to click up there, Control V to paste. And so, you know, previously this was not part of our source file. You've really, you've got to understand that you've got to select that and copy it into your source file. I'm going to collapse this panel down here. And you'll see that we've got an include file for the right microcontroller. The configuration bits there as well. It's always worthwhile just repeatedly building just to check we haven't introduced an error. That build successful again down there, so that's good. And what should we have a look at next? Well, let's just have a quick run through. So uh, you'll notice that at the reset vector of zero, so remember when you turn the microcontroller on or if it's reset, program counter changes to address zero. So at address zero, we want an instruction that's going to be useful to us. So 
this is a code block, a code block that only includes one line, admittedly, but um, that's all it needs. It goes to the label start and there's the label start. So it would then carry on execution there. Now, uh, normally you can have a load of code down here, but at the moment it's very, it's very minimal because it's only a template. And you'll see that this code, there's no address. Notice that with this um, assembly directive, we specified an address, but with this directive, there's, there's no address because it doesn't really matter. We can let the linker place uh, this block of code wherever it likes. And so uh, once we've jumped or gone to the start label, so we go to start label, uh, the instruction is go to dollar. What this does, it just, as it says here in the comment, it loops forever. Now, a go to instruction could normally go to either a label like that, um, or it can actually go to um, a specified address. Now, um, like a literal address, you could give it a number and it could jump to that address. Well, the dollar actually means the address currently held by the program counter. So in other words, this instruction just goes to itself repeatedly. Uh, this very last line, just to um, avoid confusion, let me just say it's not saying that the um, the execution of the program ends here. It just means that this is the end of the assembly file, and you've got to have that there. Okay, so hopefully that's useful. Uh, obviously, you need to know a lot more to be able to get uh, much utility out of your program, but at least now you should be able to create a new project. Um, add an assembly file using the template, add the configuration bit settings and the include file, and then still manage to get it all um, built as well. Okay, that's it.